Hey guys, this is Abhishek and in this video, I will talk about how you can split the data for the better model building. So what I mean by splitting the data is that as per a part of the standard statistical model building process, you want to reserve some data for the validation of prediction model. That is really required to test how much uh, variance is there in your predicted and observed value or test values. So what we do is generally as a rule of thumb, we reserve 70% of the data in the training set and rest other 30% on the testing set. With the help of the training data, we produce the model to bas or basically we say we are training the model and with the help of the test data, we are testing the model to see whether the model is performing fine or not. And this testing happens with the help of the calculation of uh, error metrics like um, mean standard error MSC or RMSC root mean squared error, which basically tells us whether we are doing it good or not. And uh, in next uh, couple of minutes, I will show you how you can really achieve to that level. All right, so first thing is we need to import from sklearn, uh, from sklearn dot cross 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 validation. So we need to write from and then we need to write import. Import train test split. Okay, so what this function does or this this basically method does is split the data into a training and testing straightforward okay and how we specify it is basically x underscore train and then x underscore test y underscore train and then y underscore test after that mention the train test split and then the data set name the data is basically our boston dot data and then the price the target variable boston dot target and then the test size so you have the option of specifying the training size or uh, the, the the testing size so that is size is equals to 0.7 okay let's go ahead and execute it and now we have x train x test y train y test what we can do is we can print the shapes of these x underscore train dot shape comma x underscore test dot shape y underscore train dot shape and then y underscore test dot shape so here we have 354 variable uh, 354 rows 13 variables then in test you have 152 rows and 13 variable and then in y you have 354 rows and in test you have 152 rows so there you can see that these are evenly split so that you don't have to manually go and use the loc ilc or numpy array related uh, you know uh, functions or slicing and dicing so this is pretty handy and you can specify train size, you can specify even test and the score size. If you want to look more in depth into it, you can press, you can be there in the function and press shift tab tab. Let me just close this. Shift tab tab. And then you have uh, different parameters. So for example, test size, train size is the one that we used. Couple of others, which you can further explore. Alright, I'll just close that and after that I will simply initialize the linear regression again and execute it. After that I will say the linrag.fit and we will say we will take the training data set and training is our x underscore train and then y underscore train execute it and then we will uh, we will f we have already fit the value with the help of x train and y train and after that in the previous videos if you have seen we have gone ahead and predicted the value with the help of 
the predict method. But now uh, for prediction of the value, what we have is the test data set. So what we will say is y underscore pred, which is basically predicted value, linreg dot predict specify x underscore test. Now we have the y predicted value based on that validation data set that we had. So y underscore pred if I write and this is here all these predicted values now we want to calculate the errors right because we have the predicted values and similar to the predicted values i have uh, the test values y test values which both can be compared because if you see in the x test data set which we want to test it against the model has 152 rows so the output predicted value output will have the 152 rows similarly in the uh, y test you have 152 rows so that's more of an apple to apple comparison because we have already split the data properly in the required shape okay so once we have this what we can do is we can use mp dot mean right and then what we have is the predicted and test so we will write y underscore test minus y underscore pred and then since it is a squared we will write the squared function and let's go ahead and execute it so what we get is is basically 0.118 right so this is one way of uh, going ahead and identifying the mean squared error. So I will just write mean squared error. If I want, I can from uh, sklearn dot matrix, I can import mean squared error. And if I execute it, I will simply go ahead and write mean squared error within the function if you can see y underscore true is nothing but y underscore test which is a true values and then y underscore right is basically the two main uh, out two main parameters you need to provide so let's go ahead and see whether we get the result similar to this y underscore uh, test because these are the true values and then y underscore right and go in and execute it so in this case, it has come 20. Ideally, it should be similar to this. So I think I have uh, done something wrong over here. So what we are saying is, uh, so squared is necessary to, to basically, you know, get the positive values in case if we are getting the negative value. So I think what is required is, is another or over here, the bracket and then end it over here all right so if i go ahead and execute it yeah so now it is coming so that's the thing i have got over there that's why i was wondering why these two things are different ideally they should be similar so if you look at even up till the 10th or 12th decimal point the values are same so that's the manual way and uh, as you can see you can sometimes uh, incur error so you have the direct function which is a mean squared error and uh, with that you can get the mean squared error now the interpretation is a bit difficult because if you look at it's basically the difference between the line of regression and your actual value so line of regression represents uh, basically the outcome based on your prediction and then uh, your actual values basically represents your actual y value so so what is the difference between that we are calculating that as you can see and then we are squaring it because uh, the requirement for the mean squared error that it should be positive so we are squaring the negative values and then it is uh, converting into a positive and the final output is basically 20.164731 now how you can use it for further evaluation is that let's say you are experimenting it with multiple variables here you know we have just gone ahead and taken the entire data 
but let's say you are saying okay i want to based on your business knowledge you want to select only certain vari or specific variables let's say out of uh, 12 or 13 variables you want to select five variables and want to see and uh, then you experiment then you probably did some exploratory data analysis and you saw okay a couple of other variables are also showing something significant then you can uh, you add those variables and then see whether the mean squared what is the value of mean squared error so the lesser the mean squared error the better will be the model is because this will indicate that if it is closer to the zero or if it is less compared to the multiple mean squared error based on your multiple models then you will choose the lesser one or the one which has the smallest value because it represents that whatever variables that you have chosen is best representing your line of regression line fit so that's about how you can uh, use it you can read its documentation on the uh, wikipedia or there are a couple of other sites where, which have given a good basic explanation but basic idea you can keep in mind that wherever whenever the value is less based on the multiple model evaluation uh, you can pick the lowest one but that's not the only thing you have apart from msc you have rmsc which is nothing but the square root so what it does is uh, of this value it takes the square root uh, or basically the square root of this value and uh, as as its name just root means squared value uh, squared error so what it does is uh, in case of the mean squared error it tends to enlarge the those values which has a high difference so whenever you are squaring let's say 2 if you are squaring 2 2 is to 4 let's say if you have 12 as a difference then it becomes 144 so where is 4 and where is 144 you can understand that once you take a mean that will be a higher value but in case of root mean squared error it is uh, it penalizes basically those differences and uh, create by doing the square root and get the much better and uh, interpretable output because it will be in line with uh, what your uh, x and y values or, or the line of regression and the y values difference is so i'll suggest that uh, you look at rmse as well root mean squared error which is nothing but it in case of mean squared error it takes a square in case of root it just takes a root out of it and produce the output for you so that's pretty much all i have for you in this video where i have shown you how you can split the data set how you can use the mean squared error i'm leaving you with an experiment of uh, root mean squared error and uh, do a little bit of uh, uh, study the little bit of theory about it and get the best out so that's all and i'll meet you in the new video a new topic